Good morning, St. Paul's families. I'm so glad you've gathered here for worship. Um, there's a couple things I think you'll really enjoy. And so if you have a moment, you might want to uh, get some supplies together for worship. And this is something that um, I'd encourage you to do every Sunday um, that we gather for our, our live stream worship. You certainly don't have to do this, but it's something that we really think might help to do that. So while you're gathering together, um, how about somebody get a candle, um, a little bowl of water, some salt, and some milk mixed with just a bit of honey. And I'll explain to what each of these things are. So as you gather your candle, set that out someplace in front of the screen or wherever you've gathered, and light that candle. And why do we light a candle? Well, have you ever noticed whenever we do anything sacred in our lives, when it's a really special occasion, a first date at a nice restaurant, um, if you light a candle, um, it makes a very mundane meal special. You can have at home hamburgers and hot dogs, but if you light a candle, suddenly the meal has a different sense to it. Many of us light candles in our daily prayers or as part of our daily meditation. You know, in churches, we lit candles. It started actually in the Middle Ages because you had to see. And there's all kinds of regulations during the Middle Ages about, you know, uh, if it was a bishop, you got seven candles. And if it was just a parish priest, you got six candles. That most had to do with eyesight and mm, those kinds of things, the ability to see. So so anyway, so we, we tend to light a candle. And, you know, at St. Paul's, we light a lot of candles. If you think about our our uh, our area of our, of our worship space, our sanctuary, um, there people light p candles all the time. And so, um, so why should this be any different? So go ahead, find a candle, set it out um, on a small table, maybe you've already made your home altar, and go ahead and light a candle. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to take some water and put just a bit of water into a small bowl. That's all, just a little bit of tap water into a small bowl. doesn't have to be hot or cold, just a little water there. And, you know, you'll want to set it out next to the candle. Then the next thing you want to do is take another little container and pour some salt in it. You can use kosher salt. You can use regular salt. You can use pink Himalayan rock salt if you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to be a lot, but just enough a small amount of salt that can be set up there. And then finally, a small glass of milk mixed with honey and, and have all that all together. Now, as we do this, um, uh, there'll be a ritual that we're going to use all this uh, for in just a minute. And so I want you to do that. So while you're getting those supplies, also I want to talk to you about some other things you can do to get ready for worship. So you need to warm up your voice. La, 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 la. And you want to do that because we're going to ask you to sing it a bit, right? And so what's the fun just sitting there and just watching Susanna do it? You know, this is the one place where you can sing loud and guarantee not to bother anybody besides your spouse or kids. But other than that, it'll be just fantastic. So warm up your voice, get those vocal cords ready to go, and let's bring God our very best worship and praise. Then turn off or put away your other screens. Um, you know, uh, it's so easy to get distracted, but um, there, there's got to be a, a better way to worship. You wouldn't gather in the sanctuary uh, streaming through uh, YouTube videos on your phone while you're kind of keeping the other eye on another screen watching, participating in the worship. You know, when I gather, when our family gathers together, um, we've got uh, uh, Jeannie and I, and then five kids, and um, they're between the ages of 15 and 21. And the first thing that all seven of us has to do is get rid of our cell phones. Now, why do we do that when we sit down to eat? We get rid of our cell phones because it's a way of saying, hey, this time together is important. I want to focus on you. I want to hear what you have to say. I want you to listen to me. And so we put our cell phones away. And so do that as well. You know, this is your time to be present with God. So let's be fully present and not be distracted and have 19 other things going on. And then consider dressing up a bit. Now, <laughs> in times of social isolation, dressing up a bit is a really a low bar. But, you know, right now, look at your shirt. Have you changed it in the last, I don't know, three or four days? Um are you in a way that you're ready to be present in the Almighty? Now, I know that, you know, come as you are has its place. And it really does. 
Um, come as you are. But worshiping the Almighty has its place too. And so think about that. How would you present a, a better self to the Almighty? Um, and you may want to consider that. You may want to consider what you're wearing right now. And then finally, think about your personal presentation. Again, come as you are and casual stuff has its place for sure. Me and you, Jesus, right? And all that stuff. But worshiping the Almighty also has its place too. And if you're going to be present, fully present with the Almighty in your prayers today and all that, you need to get out of bed. <laughs> you need to get dressed. Uh, and when you go downstairs, you need to um, not recline in the recliner, but sit up. Sit up and be present. Think about the respect you would show the Almighty to do this. And so uh, think about your body posture, how you're gathering, where you're sitting. This is worship. So do those things. Get those things ready. We've got time before worship starts. Make it happen. See you in a few minutes. Many of us know this hymnal as the Red Book, or just the hymnal, or some of us call it the Prayer Book. Some people even call it by a fancy color name, the Cranberry Book. A lot of people might refer to it as the ELW, or by its more formal name, the Evangelical Lutheran Worship. Whatever you call this, this hymnal, this prayer book, is used by over 95% of the Lutheran congregations of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And in here, you then will find a variety of all of the liturgies that we use on Sunday morning, as well as morning prayer, evening prayer, night prayer, and prayer for suffrages, individual confession, corporate confession, and all the various rites that we have in the church. There's also a super selection of the Psalms and Luther's small catechism, as well as a schedule of saints' readings and saints' days, and also a listing of what the daily scripture readings are that we use, and what our Sunday morning scripture readings are. All this is available in this one prayer book. Now, our church publishing house is called Augsburg Fortress, and you can go there and order all the supplies that you would ever need to be a Lutheran church. And Augsburg Fortress is making the ELW available to our folks for half off during this time of sheltering in place. So I want to encourage you to go to to go to augsburgfortress.com, it's there for you on the screen, and type in ELW. And there you'll find a variety of resources and formats to enjoy this prayer book with. You can have, find it as a pocket edition. You can find it as a pew edition, which is pictured here. You can find it as a gift edition. You can find it even as an ebook. And there's many other variations of it available for you as well. So get your copy today and enhance your spiritual life during this time of sheltering in place. Hey friends, I want to let you know about a new ministry we're going to try out here at St. Paul's uh, just for a couple weeks and see how it goes, but we're going to call it God at the Movies. And each week um, we'll have a chance to sit down with a movie together and um, we'll watch it together, and then, or not watch it together, but we'll watch it ahead of time and then uh, have a chance to discuss the movie and and see what that's about. There's a whole story related to God at the movies, uh, but what are the spiritual themes, the Christ teaching themes, all those things that come through particular movies? So it's going to happen Thursday nights at 8 p.m. This Thursday night, uh, the first movie in our premiere uh, discussion uh, we'll be looking at is Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Oh Brother, Where Art Thou is a wonderful movie, and uh, you can find it on On Demand, um, on your cable network. You can find it on Amazon Prime as well. And so, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, it's starring George Clooney. Uh, it's just fantastic. We sing one of the songs of this movie, actually, that was popularized by this movie in church often, uh, Come to the River to Pray. And so I uh, want to invite all of you to be a part of that. And then a Zoom link will be sent out um, and uh, via email, and you can all dial in on your devices, and we can have this wonderful conversation on Thursday nights at 8 o'clock, God at the Movies. It'll last just for half an hour from 8 to 8.30. So the task between now and then is to find some time to watch Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? So God at the Movies, see you this week, Thursday night, 8 o'clock. 
Well, good morning, St. Paul's families. I'm so pleased that we can all be gathering together here during this time of sheltering in place and quarantine. In Life Our Parish, you can see all the activities happening at our church that are printed for you on the screen in front of you. Um, I would just encourage you to avail yourself to as many of those activities as you can. I also want to remind you of a new announcement. Um, we have created a COVID-19 relief fund here at St. Paul's, and uh, this fund will be used to support those families um, that have special needs regarding food or other staples of daily living uh, that they are uh, not able to afford uh, due to job loss. And so uh, this fund will help uh, those families in our community of Lodi uh, get the help and supplies uh, that they need. And so uh, you can send a check to the church office, St. Paul Lutheran Church, 701 South Pleasant, Lodi, California, 95240. And uh, then we will uh, and make sure to note on the memo line, COVID-19 Relief Fund. And we will make sure that that uh, designated money is used that way. Uh, we are trying to create a way for you to give on the website. So do check the website. And uh, there, there may be special instructions for ways that you can give electronically um, uh, through stpaullodi.com. Uh, so do, do want to encourage giving towards uh, the COVID-19 relief fund. We've also added a new slide to our announcements this morning. And it has our birthdays and anniversaries that are coming up this next week. And so we always want to celebrate with folks, even though uh, we're not able to be physically present. We certainly can remember them in the prayers and uh, celebrate uh, these milestones in their lives. Um, and so um, if you want to make sure uh, that your birthday or your loved one's birthday or your anniversary uh, is, is mentioned on these slides, please send an email with your name and birth dates and anniversary dates to um, office St. Paul at yahoo.com. And uh, we will make sure to update our files or verify that our files are accurate and your name uh, can be included or your loved one's name can be included on that file at the appropriate time. So do, do want to remind you of that. We're starting a new thing each week here in our online worship. We want to recognize all those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries each week. And so you see here this wonderful list. So happy birthday greetings to Carrie, Alice, Brian, Pastor Mark, Pat, Leandro, Litzi, Pat, Juliana, Jorge, uh, Carrie, Scott, Madeline, Larry, and Lissandra. Uh, we want to wish all of them a happy birthday this week. And then happy anniversaries to Christy and Jeff Glenn, and Colleen and Steve Hertzfeld. May God bless all of you as you celebrate these milestones of your life.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And so now we take the bowl of water, and in remembrance of our baptism, which binds us to the cross of Christ and ensures our forgiveness of sins for all eternity. We dip our fingers in the water, and if we're by ourselves, we do this gesture to ourself, but if we're with others, we do it for one another. So we dip our fingers in the water, and we make the sign of the cross on our companion's forehead, and we tell them, remember, you are loved. Let's do that now. Remember, you are loved. Remember, you are loved. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Part of your plan, 
So turn us around, Lord, to make your world new. May we seek in all things to first follow you. In change and in sorrow, may we seek your reign. O God, in our pausing, restore us again. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. Day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. i 
The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When abused, Christ did not return abuse. When suffering, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. Word of God, Word of Life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I'm hearing a lot out there about people uh, wanting to get done with this shelter in place and let's just go back to work. And this desire they want, despite what health professionals tell us, despite the fact that the rate of death is not declining yet, despite the fact that the rate of infection is not declining yet, it's beginning in some place to flatten out. But people want people to just ignore the shelter-in-place orders and do whatever it is they want to do because they're going to be safe. And I want to remind you all that it was just two weeks ago that that's exactly what these churches were saying about the shelter in place, that they had a right to be church together. They could ignore what the science says. And then very quickly, uh, within 10 days or so, one third of the cases in Sacramento counties were church-based cases. Um, and we've seen in certain denominations across the country where they've lost something like over 50 or 60 pastors and bishops um, who decided as a denomination to ignore 
these warnings. And now we're beginning to see the first cases from the protesters at the capitals uh, who went in at state capitals across the country to say, lift uh, lift the shelter-in-place orders. And now we're starting to see these uh, uh, pandemic hotspots develop in those places. Um, so we need to be very careful of what's being said out there. I know there's concern about when St. Paul's will reopen, um, and uh, you just need to think not not for a long time. We are in the very last batch that the state of California will allow to open up, and there's lots of challenges, uh, even with social distancing and all that. Um, if we have to social distance, that means that there is a limited number of people that can come to church. Uh, that means that um, uh, you can't sit together. That means there's no singing, no communion, no greeting at the door, no sharing of the peace, no coffee and donuts. At that point, driving up in your car, um, keeping the windows rolled up, turning off your engine so your air conditioning doesn't run, and sitting there in the sweat, and then having me do something fabulous from the front porch of the church just doesn't sound very inviting. This is actually a better option. So it'll be a while. Um, I think emotionally, uh, for those of you who are really hoping that somehow we'll be able to return to back to church in some form, probably won't happen until end of July, August, um, is where I would kind of uh, be thinking if I were you, and it would be in a very limited form. The other thing we know uh, is that the uh, California Department of Public Health is planning, planning for another shutdown that would occur in the first uh, week or so of November and would last through the end of January. Now, it's not a guarantee that's going to happen, but they're planning because that's what epidemics do or pandemics do. And in terms of uh, uh, treatments and in terms of uh, uh, vaccines, um, you know, we're a year away. So, so we have, we're going to be caught in this gray, this kind of, of in-between areas. And so we, we need to be very much aware of that. And in spite of all this, people are pushing to ignore the shelter-in-place orders, and we're just going to go back to work and do these things. And, and I'm so fearful uh, because we've seen what happens when churches do that. We're seeing what happens when protesters do that. Um, and uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't bode well for them at, at all. Uh, Sweden practiced no social distancing. Uh, they tried this herd immunity thing, and their death rate is at 22 per 1,000 people. Now, to put that in perspective, in New York City, the death rate is 1 per 1,000 people, and we think New York City's bad. Sweden is 22 times worse than that. And to put all of that in perspective, the death rate in New York City is about what the death rate was of U.S. Marines from the 1st Division when they invaded Baghdad. So right now, the risk in New York City is as if you're with a Marine uh, invading Baghdad. Um, and in Sweden, it's 22 times greater than that. So these aren't, these aren't nothing risks. These are, these are big risks that we're dealing with. And I'm not willing to put um, any of my beloved members of St. Paul's up to that risk, nor any member of my family, nor anybody I love, nor anybody. Um, to have that risk. So we will be um, uh, watching what the science uh, tests tell us, what the Department of Health officials tell us, and uh, and then um, trying to come to our best practices is from there. In the meantime, um, people are saying, though, but these people need to go to work uh, because um, uh, poverty creates its own set of health problems. And that's true. Um, the poor, you know, the, when these kind of things, the depression rate's going up, the addiction rate's going up, domestic violence will go up. Um, all these these things are, are beginning to happen. This is a, is a, is a difficult time. Uh, if you lose your business, um, all these things, these are terrible, terrible things. And so, you know, so we have to send these people into a war zone because that's what the equivalent of it is, right? Baghdad. We have to send them into a war zone so that these other problems don't happen. That just seems like, you know, we got to send them into uh, 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 the fire because the frying pan will burn them. Um, it, there's got to be a different way. Well, in fact, there is, and we should know this. We should know this instinctively as Christians. And so in the second reading in Acts, you hear about the church, the early church, the first century Christians, setting up the, the church and how it would function. And they would hold everything that they owned in common together. They actually sold their goods and held the proceeds from that in common and then distributed that to anyone who had need. So that everybody would have enough food, everybody would have shelter, everybody would have clothing. They they simply shared what they had with one another. And why did they do this? You know, and it says they they went to bed with generous hearts, and that they were known for their generosity and their love to one another. So so that's 
what the Christian church is supposed to be. This is the biblical church here. And we find ourselves 2,000 years later not willing to engage in that. So that becomes one of our, our, our issues there. The second issue that we have then is also what would be the heart and mind of Jesus in this process. And so there we can look to uh, Matthew chapter uh, 14 and the feeding of the 5,000. And so when it was evening, the disciples came to Jesus and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. See, the disciples didn't want to care for the people. Um, they wanted them to go back to work, to go into a dangerous environment. Send them away, they asking Jesus, not stay here. And Jesus said to them, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, well, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. <sighs> Nobody needs to starve. Nobody needs to be evicted. And nobody needs to have their uh, utility bill unpaid. The utilities aren't shutting off electricity during this crisis. Um, we have the ability to care for all of these folks. The solution to their problems are in our pockets. That's the truth. You know that and I know that. And so we need to stand up and be church to reflect the heart of Jesus who rejected his disciples' advice to send people away. We can't be saying to Jesus, Jesus is not our problem. They need to go back to work in a war zone. We can't say that. Jesus, that's not his heart. That's not his desire for us. And we also need to understand that the way the church was organized was that we would care for each other in times of need. Friends, Jesus doesn't reject you. And if Jesus is your pastor, what is Jesus telling you to do? To send people out there to risk death? Or is he saying to us, well, care for each other. That's your brothers and sisters. And the fact that we aren't screaming about this is troubling. Because we need to be sharing Jesus with the world. And I'm not sure why we're not yelling about it but we need to start. So we're going to have a COVID-19 relief fund here at St. Paul's. You already heard the announcement about that. And we're going to remember Christ's heart, Christ's heart for each of us to not send anybody away, but to care for them out of the resources that are already here in our pockets. And we're going to remember our ancestors in the church that started the church 2,000 years ago and that they were known for their generosity and their love and their willingness to share so that all would be fed. This is the kind of love that Christ has for you. You are called now to share that heart, that voice, that love of Christ, not just the intellectual thing, not just the deep spiritual thing, but the material heart of Christ with the world. So if people in our community have to go back to work because there's no other way for them to survive, then it's our fault. And we need to understand that our responsibility is to make sure that they know that they don't have to do that. This last week, we already helped 12 families in our town. We're going to help more. And we're going to help more because we're going to bring our fishes and our loaves to the table. We're going to do more because this is how the church is organized and this is what Christ calls us to be. In the gospel reading today, he reminds us that we are called to bring life, to have life, and to have life in abundance. So let's get to work. Let's remember who our shepherd is. Let's remember the heart of our shepherd and let's listen to his calling and follow his command.
Amen. Let us witness together and to one another our faith in Christ and all he taught us, as found in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the ancient Israelites, the promise that kept them going forward to striving to make it through another day of their bondage was this promise that they would be someday but freed by God from their bondage and taken and rewarded with a land of milk and honey. And so they waited and wandered in the desert for 40 years seeking this promised land of milk and honey. As we live in the time after the resurrection, we too hang on to a promise of a future time of perfection, a future land of milk and honey. And so as we look forward to that future, we then share in our cup of milk mixed with honey. And I want you to share it with one another. And as you do so, we say to one another, God has promised us a land of milk and honey. And then you would give it to them to take a sip from. So God has promised us a land of milk and honey and then give it to them to drink. After you've taken your sip, then you would go and share with another person. So to give you time to do this, I will repeat this phrase, God has promised us a land of milk and honey, uh, three or four times to allow you to share it with whoever you're worshiping with. God has promised us a land of milk and honey. God has promised us a land of milk and honey. God has promised us a land of milk and honey. God has promised us a land of milk and honey. Amen. Penned up in our homes, but united in the one flock of believers, we pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all in need, asking God our shepherd, using the words, restore our life. For the church, O God, we pray, that we will hear and follow your voice, calling to us in the word that pastors and bishops be sustained for their shepherding tasks that churches devastated by the virus be upheld, that, it, that in this time churches find ways to continue their ministries of education and service. O God, faithful shepherd of the church, restore our life. For the earth we pray, that lands and waters be renewed, that animals and plants enjoy safe growth, that rain and soil nurture the fields, that drought and floods in Yemen be averted, and locusts of Kenya cease their frenzy. O God, steadfast gardener of the earth, for the nations of the world we pray, the heads of state and legislators cooperate for the good of all, that medical experts be heeded, that government money serve the nation's greatest needs, that during Ramadan, Muslims are granted release from prejudice. O oh God, fearless peacemaker of the nations, restore our life. 
for a world so economically divided, we pray. That the millions of those unemployed be given food and shelter now and jobs in the future. That children will find a fruitful means of education. That refugees be safeguarded from violence and prejudice. That inspired by the early Christians, those who have means become ever more generous to those who endure great want. O God, just protector of the poor, restore our life. For all in need, we pray that those afflicted with the coronavirus be cared for, that the sick be healed, that those in despair find hope, that those who are lonely be comforted, that medical workers be safeguarded, that those we name here receive the best possible care. O God, mighty healer of the sick. For our own desires, we pray, that like the shepherds Rachel and David, each tending their father's flocks, we will be blessed for the fulfilling our tasks and that you hear the cries of our hearts. O God, tender shepherd of each of us, restore our life. We praise you for those who have died in the faith, especially Bill Mackey. We are thankful for his faithfulness and partnership in the ministry of your church here at St. Paul's. We ask that you be with Marilyn, his entire family, and all who grieve his death. Surround them with an awareness of your love for them and sustain them with the hope and the promise of Christ's resurrection. We pray that at our end, as sheep of your own fold, as lambs of your own flock, we will be gathered into your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. O God, gateway to life, restore our life. Into your everlasting arms we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your care for us, through Jesus Christ, our guardian and friend. Amen. One breath, one body, one Lord of all, one cup.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In Matthew chapter 5, we read that Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. And what he meant by this was that they were uniquely gifted to do miraculous things. In Jesus' time, salt did amazing things. It prevented meat from spoiling. It flavored food. It could help to clean things. Salt was quite the commodity. And so when Jesus declared his disciples salt of the earth, he was declaring them something very special, very unique, very miraculous, and very powerful. For us, we sometimes miss that because salt is such a common thing on our dinner tables, and many of us ingest too much salt every day. But when Jesus used this phrase, he wasn't saying that the disciples were common. He was saying that they were extraordinarily valuable and gifted with an amazing, miraculous power to change the world, to prevent decay and death, and to bring life and hope to the world. And so we hear those words of Jesus spoken to us today. You are the salt of the earth. And so you're going to take this little bowl of salt. And for those of you that are able, some of, of us are not because of high blood pressure uh, reasons, but you may want to dip your finger in the salt and, uh, and put some on your tongue. Um, but you're going to pass that bowl from one person to the next, again with the phrase, you are the salt of the earth. And, um, and I will repeat that phrase uh, three or four times so that there's enough time for you to pass it around the room. You are the salt of the earth. 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 Amen. Let us now pray together with the words our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In this time of being physically separated, your social ministry board continues to want to connect our St. Paul members with opportunities to be involved with our community. One opportunity is to gather your own and others' backyard produce and deliver it to Hope Harbor on Sacramento Street. Hope Harbor is a Salvation Army site that is still serving meals to many in our community who are hungry. St. Paul has always taken what wasn't sold at God's half acres to them. They are very grateful for any fresh produce. Call, call John at the shelter at 209-367-9560 for delivery protocols. Another opportunity is to purchase gift cards from Rancho San Miguel or Cherokee Lane, on Cherokee Lane Smart and Final on Lodi Avenue, or Food for Less on Kettleman Lane, in the amounts of between $10 and $50. These cards can be delivered to the church by calling, um, by calling the church to set up a time for someone to meet you there. Or you can give through your usual channel to St. Paul, designating it to, for Feeding Families Fund, and staff will purchase the cards. These will be delivered to meet families who are known to members of St. Paul, either by teachers who have a personal relationship with families who have a need for groceries or personal care items, as well as Pastor Nelson, who has relationships with migrant workers who are needing food support. Also, we encourage you to become a member of Social Ministry. We are looking for ways to expand outreach opportunities and want your ideas. We will be meeting May 4th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Please call me to get on the meeting list. 
Sharon Signaler at 209-712-3348. Thanks for listening and please, peace be with you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen.